So we're completing the book of Daniel, and it's really hard not to just marvel at its contents and be impressed with um, such a man like Daniel. You know, though he was obviously intelligent, gifted, and talented, that's not uh, what distinguished him. He was a man of faith and obedience. And though, you know, um, he was intelligent, he didn't lean on his intelligence. And today, there are so many cynics, you know, um, skeptics, so many unintelligent or modestly intelligent individuals who's, um, who in their pride elevate their own intelligence. You know, they say things like, prove it to me and uh, regarding the things in the Bible. And, you know, this doesn't make sense to me. And, you know, of course, unless the Bible can make sense to me, uh, that's the only way it can be validated, right? Yeah, no, that's not true. You know, so people will say things like, unless I understand this, then I'm going to choose not to believe it. And that's why faith is not measured on a scale of intelligence, but more on a scale of of humility. It's why Jesus begins his Sermon on the Mount, transforming the way that we view um, the intelligence of the world. You know, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This poverty of spirit is the opposite of pride. You know, what can be easily missed is that through Daniel's uh, prophecies, you know, even though that they're spanning nearly 70 years, there aren't actually many visions or dreams that he's given. And these visions are spaced over long segments of time um, as described by the year that it mentions that the king was in power. Um, But Daniel was always prepared. You know, that's what we see. He always had faith. And so there were times that he was given the interpretations as in Daniel chapter 2 and 4 Um, But there are other times that he actually had to say, you know, my Lord, what shall be the end of these things? He didn't know what it meant. In fact, we read in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 to 12, it says, Of this salvation the prophets inquired and searched carefully. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you. So in faith, they wrote, things that they didn't fully comprehend. They were just being led by the Spirit of God, trusting that that revelation that they were receiving was coming from the Lord. And so in faith, they relied on obedience and not on their comprehension to to put forth the words that they were given. And since most of us are not experts in Persian and Grecian history, Daniel 11 can sometimes seem a bit tedious. You know, but enclosed in that one chapter is over 100 distinct and very specific prophecies. And all of them came true over the next 400 years. And it was because of this um, that the that it gives proof <clears throat> from this book for the truth of God's word and scriptures. And this book has come under more attack by skeptics um, than many others. Many skeptics claim that because of its accuracy that Daniel... Uh, didn't truly author the book, but that's not reality. He did write the book. You know, some say that it was actually written um, starting in 50 AD, um, but Daniel actually wrote it in 536 BC. And there's a way that we know that, you know, how we can be sure of it, of its authenticity and how we can silence those skeptics. And here are a couple of those proofs. First, um, the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures that's done by, uh, was done by the Hebrew scribes. They were compiled in 285 BC, before most of these dates, and it includes the entire book of Daniel. Um, also, the Dead Sea Scrolls, <clears throat> which were written starting in 150 BC, they contain the book of Daniel. And the Roman historian as well, Josephus, he describes when Alexander the Great approached the city of Jerusalem approximately in 330 BC, that one of the Jewish priests showed him the prophecy concerning him and the Greek empire in the book of Daniel. And so he chose to spare Jerusalem at that time. And then also Ezekiel, one of uh, Daniel's contemporaries, um, he's taken in the second wave of captivity in 597 BC, and he mentions, Dan- mentions Daniel by name in Ezekiel 
chapter 14, verse 14, and he places him in the same category as Noah and Job. And then, most importantly, Jesus quotes Daniel, and he refers to him as a true prophet in Matthew chapter 24, verse 15. And that's something that he surely would not have done if Daniel was not true prophecy. So God gets to decide what is revealed to us and when. And God's timing is always perfect. So the question is <clears throat> whether or not we're willing to accept this truth in faith and move forward in obedience despite the fact that we don't possess all of the answers. You know, we read in Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, but you, Daniel, Shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall increase. Now that's interesting because it's referring to something that will signify the time of the end. We certainly in this generation have had a massive explosion in knowledge just over the last 100 years. And many shall go to and fro. Even our modes of travel just in the last 100 years. You know, 100 years ago we were in horse and carriage to get around. And now we're going to the moon. <clears throat> can travel by airplane any time of the day or night uh, all across the world. So this is seemingly quite an indication of also the time that we're living in based on what Daniel identified here when he said that he, this was for a time where, when knowledge was going to increase. And that's it's in itself is another thing that we should consider, you know, the level of knowledge of um, surgeries, of, you know, um, building uh, things, of cloning, of you know, robotic technology, like all of the things that have never been able to be done before until this generation where we've had this massive knowledge increase, even knowledge at our fingertips because we can have it in the palm of our hand with something called Google and our smartphones. So knowledge has certainly increased. And so I think that's interesting to just take note of that as we read it in Daniel as he's defining what these things are, you know, the, the generation that these things are written to and about. Now again, he writes in chapter 12, 9, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end. Yet to John, we read in Revelation 22, 10, do not seal the words of the prophecy in this book, for the time is at hand. You know, in pride, people want answers and we want to understand them all. <clears throat> in humility, um, we understand that we are only vessels of God. And that God will reveal to us um, what he believes we need to know in his timing. And the more important question is whether or not our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Whether one understands it now or not, eternity will come. And there will be a day when each of us will breathe our last. You know, our destination will not be determined by answering some multiple choice um, test to, to figure out what's our level of knowledge and intellect. But it's going to be determined by whether or not we repented and humbled ourselves before an almighty God. And if we accepted the finished work of salvation offered by Jesus Christ, Yeshua, his Hebrew name, and we're either covered by his blood or we're not. And this might seem oversimplistic, but it's not. It's the gospel. Praise the Lord. I pray that you're blessed today as you're reading in the prophet um, prophecies of Daniel and in your reading through God's word and that the Holy Spirit is illuminating scriptures and revealing truth to you in the mighty name of Yeshua. Shalom.